Hey everybody, thanks for joining me and welcome back to Custom Conquest Showcase. It's TJ coming at you with our most figure filled episode yet. I have not one, not two, but a whole village of custom amiibo coming to town today, featuring the seven alternate Animal Crossing villagers based on their appearance in Super Smash Brothers. So settle in, make yourself at home, and let's unpack this together. My personal history with the Animal Crossing series goes all the way back to the original title first released in the States on the Nintendo GameCube in September of 2002. As fate would have it, the game released mere days before I moved out of my parents' house to set out on my own for the very first time. As I'm sure many of you have experienced for yourselves, it's an adjustment to leave home and start from scratch in a new town, and I can't overstate how comforting it was to share a parallel journey with Animal Crossing's villager. Silly as it sounds, the game went a long way to help me cope with feelings of homesickness, saying goodbye to all my friends, meeting new people, making new friends, even managing my own finances, and reinforced that sense of excitement we experienced when exploring a new environment. Not to mention the relaxing laid-back pace of the game also provides provided some much needed respite from my grueling daily routine. So for me, the game proved to be nothing short of magical. I bought Animal Crossing with literally no idea what to expect, and what it meant to me was so much more than I ever could have hoped for. I've continued to enjoy each iteration of the game since, and as you might expect, I'm really excited to explore new horizons in the upcoming Animal Crossing for Switch. Not so long ago, Villager made another big move when he received the coveted invitation to join the battle in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. And with that came the amiibo treatment. At launch, along with Marth and Wii Fit Trainer, Villager was nearly impossible to find, but would later be restocked in much more generous supply as a Toys R Us retail exclusive, where I was able to score an additional 7 Villagers to compete in my Smash Chess Christmas Special, and even though I was able to take advantage of the 8 unique Villager alternates for their in-game appearance, my shelf still displayed 8 number 1s. I always knew I wanted to customize the whole village, but the realities of my schedule didn't afford me the free time to get started, and since I can't manipulate the clock in real life like I'm so sure shamelessly want to do when it comes to Animal Crossing, don't judge me! It wound up being two years from the point I procured my extra villagers before I actually had a chance to give them my attention. Eventually a weekend freed up and I seized my opportunity. Before we get too deep into it though, I do want to mention I completed these customs before Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was even announced. So these customs are based on the renders from Super Smash Bros. 4. Two of the villagers received an Ultimate update featuring a different skin tone, and while that change isn't reflected in this episode, I may modify these villagers later or perhaps create an entire new custom version attempting to replicate the pose of the ultimate key art. Now, let's dig in and see what this custom task entails. The first order of business is to organize them by wardrobe. Four of the villagers wear t-shirts and shorts, and four villagers wear dresses. We can further subdivide our villagers into pairs based on their hairstyles. If we observe them as silhouettes, while we have eight unique villager designs, there are only four unique models. This fella, for example, shares his style with the villager amiibo, meaning he calls for the least amount of work since he's a straight up palette swap. To extrapolate a little further, the bodies of the male villagers won't require any alterations to the shape, although two of them will receive a new do. As you can imagine, the female villagers involve significantly more modification to convert the clothes into a dress, and all of them will be undergoing a hair makeover. Organizing the villagers in this way helped me streamline the process and avoid unnecessary work. I customized all of the villagers at the same time, but it makes more sense to me to present them individually. So let's start with the easiest and work our way up to the most challenging. First up is this friendly fella. Since I didn't need to adjust anything about the figure, all I needed to do was change his shirt and eyes. That said, he probably sports the trickiest t-shirt design. Instead of solid colors, it features gradients of blue that softly transition into a white stripe. This look is better achieved with an airbrush in my opinion. I find it a little tough to pull off with traditional brushes. I did my best, I kept the paint thin, and I pushed it around until it seemed to resemble the design I was going for. Near enough. For his eyes, and for all the villagers' eyes for that matter, I rubbed the original pair off with a fine-grained sandpaper until I had a smooth blank surface. Then, I applied vinyl stickers that I designed in Adobe Illustrator, scaled to size, and printed to a vinyl bumper sticker from vistaprint.com. Vinyl offers a smooth, polished finish with all the durability of plastic and none of the pitfalls associated with painting. As well as providing a very clean result, stickers afford a considerable amount of latitude when it comes to placement. If you make a mistake, there's no mess, no problem. Just peel them back and try again. If you want to take advantage of these designs, I'm making them available to you for free. Find the link in the description below. Let's usher in our next neighborhood villager, this time clad in purple apparel. All the male villagers have identical blue shoes, green socks, 
gray shorts, and the same pose, but we do need to restyle this guy's hair. For that, I snipped off the default villager's spiky triangle bangs, sculpted his wave out of epoxy sculpt, sanded everything smooth, and tagged it with some brown paint. I employed Vallejo model color paints for all these customs. They offer a very high pigment concentration, so I was able to paint the purple right over the red t-shirt with only a couple coats. To preserve the sharp precision of the number 4 decal, I turned to my trusty vinyl stickers. Our next and final male villager features the same side wave hair as the previous one. I followed the same procedure to style his hair, and just as with the other two dudes, I left his bottom half as is. This guy's signature differentiation is his yellow number 6 T with sporty stripes. Because I have yet to find a yellow paint that can deliver reasonably good coverage without having to do like a million coats, I opted to spray paint it. Since I didn't want to needlessly disassemble the figure if I didn't have to, that meant masking everything other than the t-shirt with painter's tape. It was a little tedious around the arms, but not difficult. I wanted the black lines to be as crisp as possible, so rather than attempt to paint them onto the yellow, I cut strips out of electrical tape and fit them into place. The result here is a look I'm extremely happy with. I turned to my vinyl stickers to finish off his eyes on the number 6 decal. Let's welcome to town the first of our female villagers. This is probably my second favorite design behind the villager Nintendo chose to use as the default. Converting the official villager amiibo into female form was not without its complications. And I'll mention here, the steps pertaining to feminizing the attire applies to all four female figures. I decided the best way to implement the required modifications would be to first remove the arms. So I dipped the villager amiibo into some boiling water to soften the plastic. The added flexibility made removal from the sleeve a cinch. The male villager sleeve is somewhat trapezoidal, whereas the female sleeve is more oval. It would be easy enough to roll out a new sculpted sleeve, but since I had to make a total of eight and needed them to be identical, I doubted my ability to be able to maintain uniform consistency throughout. So instead, I found an appropriately scaled bead and sanded one side down to lay flat against the torso. So, I connected the arm and bead back to the body with a paperclip armature and sealed it with some super glue. I tried to find something I could use to achieve the same uniformity for the bell skirt, but eventually I reconciled myself to the fact that I was gonna have to simply sculpt it. It wasn't difficult per se. The hardest part was just trying to make sure all four dresses matched as closely as possible. Just as all four male villagers wear matching shoes and socks, so do the four females. Other than removing the legs of the shorts, I didn't do anything to change the shape of them, but I repainted all the shoes red, being sure to add the red strap. I painted the green sock and the bare leg into a white stocking, and I added stripes cut from blue electrical tape. Now for this particular gal's unique features. For her hairdo, I cut down the default villager's bangs to get them out of the way, and added bits of modeling compound to sculpt her sideswept bangs, the side flips, and I added more volume to the back. Her pink hair sets her apart from the rest of the company, including the default villager who all favor brown hair, so I dabbed her new do in my prettiest pink. I also did my best to mix up a special shade that matched the color of her dress, and I added yellow electrical tape rings on her sleeve. Her eyes, just as with the guys, come courtesy of my custom vinyl sticker, along with the flower decal on her dress. Our next gal in green underwent the same hairdo treatment as Pretty in Pink, only she prefers the brunette look. As I mentioned, achieving matching styles was one of my main objectives and it meant a lot of time comparing and adjusting. The dress on this young miss depicts one of the more detailed designs. I painted a white arch in front with forest green for the sides, sleeves, and bust. I added the light green trim pattern at the bottom as well as white edging for the sleeves. I'd had so much success with electrical tape thus far, I made a go for it here as well. It worked great for the sleeves, but it was admittedly less successful on the front of the dress. I attempted a somewhat dramatic arch, and while I did manage to finesse it into shape, it peeled up in one of the sections before the sealer could dry. I'm convinced I could have made it work if I babysat it more while the sealer set, but since I left them to dry unsupervised, this is the result. It doesn't look the best, but frankly I'm not losing any sleep over it. It actually reminds me of a phrase my dad said to me one time. Dumb is better than perfect. As a hopeless perfectionist, I really took this to heart. It's so easy to agonize over every small detail to the point where you never actually get around to finishing anything. And sometimes, you just have to learn to let the small stuff go. This dress features what I would consider to be the most complex decal. This pixelated image kind of reminds me of Space Invaders. No part of me believed I could achieve this with paint. So along with her eyes, I was happy to add this via vinyl sticker. Now, we move on to the villagers I consider to present the highest level of difficulty. In addition to all the standard aspects of converting default villagers' clothes into a dress, this lovely lady has a hairstyle no part of me wanted to sculpt. I set the stage by trimming off default villagers' bangs, but I was resolute in finding something I could use for the ponytails. Because of how thin they are when they connect to the head, and how likely they are to be grabbed when handling the amiibo, I didn't trust the durability of a modeling compound due to the rigidity. I needed a flexible, forgiving plastic, preferably that didn't require much alteration, since I needed six total, and again, uniformity being my guiding principle. My prayers were answered in the form of Deku Link from the Jack-specific World of Nintendo 
Nintendo line. I softened him in boiling water long enough to remove his yellow hairline and repurpose it as a trio of ponytails. For optimum durability, I utilized my hand drill to bore three small holes into Villager's head at the designated locations, plugged them with paper clips, and fed a piece of Deku Link's hair onto each one. Believe me, it was a lot more agonizing and time-consuming to do it than it was to explain it just now but I'm happy with how it turned out, and I'm grateful for Deku Link's sacrifice. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll breathe new life into him by salvaging those remaining parts in a future custom. When it came to painting this young lady's dress, I have to confess, I didn't quite know what I was looking at. The design is somewhat abstract, and I found it difficult to translate into paint, so I tried not to overthink it too much and just attempted to reproduce what I saw as best I could. Now for the final figure to complete our villager collection. This gal here represents the most challenging aspects of everything we've discussed so far and combines them into a single formidable figure. Firstly, we had the customary process to don the dress, followed by having to replicate the most arduous of hairstyles. On top of that, the base of her dress is yellow, which meant I would be spray painting it, so I needed to mask all other portions of the figure with painter's tape. And then, because I wanted super sharp lines for the blue stripes, I thought I might be able to get away with blue electrical tape. And it did work well enough when I applied it, but just as with our gallon green, the tape shifted before the sealer could set, locking my lines slightly off. I did go ahead and touch up the areas where the peeling tape exposed the yellow beneath, and it's clearly not perfect. Honestly, I think if I could roll back the clock like we all do in Animal Crossing, oh come on, who are we kidding, you do it too. I'd probably change the tactics on this one and paint the blue stripes, but I think I can live with it as is. This villager was also the beneficiary of the custom vinyl stickers, but she wins the prize for requiring the most effort. Not only did I have to navigate the scissor around those tiny lower lashes, but she's also the only villager to feature eyebrows, so those were an additional application. It might have taken longer than I would have liked, and presented more of a challenge than I expected, but I'm proud and excited to have every Smash Brothers villager finally find a home in my Amiibo collection. Customizing is an intrinsically personal craft, and for me, that's what Animal Crossing is all about. From everything we've learned about New Horizons on Switch, we have every reason to believe this Animal Crossing outing is going to be the most personal and most customizable yet. I can't wait. Before we say goodbye, let me know in the comments section below which Super Smash Brothers villager design is your favorite. I'm partial to default villager, maybe because of my strong affinity for the color red, but I also really like our pretty and pink pal as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to listen to me wax poetic about Amiibo in the process of applying that personal stamp. Wishing you victory in your upcoming custom conquests. Hope to see you again real soon with another all-new custom Amiibo figure. Until then, thanks for playing.